Coffee Break German Season 3, Episode 9. Hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück zu Coffee Break German. Ich bin Marc. Und ich bin Andrea. Wie geht's dir heute, Andrea? Mir geht es fantastisch, Marc. Und dir? Mir geht's auch sehr gut, danke. Now, last time, Andrea, we were talking about connectors and we mentioned damit, uh, ohne das and, and so on. But one of the things I've been thinking about since last time is the whole idea of in order to do something. And there's a little expression that we've come across a few times before in Coffee Break German. And I'm wondering where it fits into the picture. Do you know which expression I'm referring to? Yeah, uh, yeah. Funny you should say this, Mark, because this is exactly the expression that we're going to talk about today. Okay. Yeah? And it's um zu. So it's an infinitive structure with um zu, which could be translated as in order to. Okay. Excellent. That sounds good. And hopefully we'll be able to identify exactly what the difference is between that and the other ones that we've already learned. Yes, I'm sure we will. Also, bist du bereit? Ich bin bereit. Los geht's. Ja, also heute sprechen wir über um zu, so infinitive structure with um zu, and we would translate this into English as in order to, so a, a consequence that we want to achieve. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to start this off with an example mm -hmm. and then we can take it apart. Okay, yeah? sounds good. Maria will Deutsch lernen, um nach Deutschland zu ziehen. Okay, so Maria will Deutsch lernen. Uh, she wants to learn German, um nach Deutschland zu ziehen, in order to to move, to, to, to flit to, to Germany. Ja, so ziehen nach such and such. Ziehen means to move to. Okay, so um, da, 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 zu, plus the infinitive. Ja, das ist sehr gut, Mark. Und ich habe ein zweites Beispiel, a second example, if you'd like to hear it. Bitte? Dagmar hat sich ein Auto gekauft, um bequemer zu pendeln. Okay, so Dagmar hat sich ein Auto gekauft. Dagmar has bought a car. Um bequemer zu pendeln, you said? Mm -hmm, ja. So pendeln, I think, is to commute. Das ist richtig, ja. So in order to commute more comfortably. Ja, genau, richtig. Sehr okay. gut. Ja. So we've had two um zu, and the zu is bringing in the infinitive um something zu, zu tun or, or zu machen or whatever. Um, so what is the difference here between this um zu And uh, the ones we learned last time, like the damit and um, so das. If we look at uh, Maria and uh, Dagmar, these two examples that we've seen, is that we have in both clauses the same subject. So if we look at example one, Maria will Deutsch lernen, um nach Deutschland zu ziehen. It is Maria who wants to learn German so that Maria can move to Deutschland. Yeah? And the same with Dagmar. Dagmar hat sich ein Auto gekauft, um bequemer zu pendeln. It's Dagmar that has bought herself a car because Dagmar wants to uh, commute more comfortably. So it's in both clauses the same subject. But if we have two different subjects, then this um zu doesn't work anymore and we need to change it to either damit oder so das. And I have an example if you'd like to hear it. Okay, yep. So we go back to Maria, who wants to learn German, and now we'll see why. Maria will Deutsch lernen, damit ihre Schwiegereltern sie verstehen. Right, okay, I'm getting it now. So Maria will Deutsch lernen, she wants to learn German, damit ihre Schwiegereltern sie verstehen, so that um, her, uh, her parents-in-law genau. uh, understand her. Genau, das ist richtig. Okay. So we have in the first clause, Maria will Deutsch lernen, Maria as the subject. And in the second clause, damit ihre Schwiegereltern sie verstehen, we have the Schwiegereltern who are the subject. Right. Yeah? We can make the same sentence with so das. Yep. Maria will Deutsch lernen, 
so dass ihre Schwiegereltern sie verstehen. Right. So, we've got the same subject with um zu, but with the different subject we need so das oder damit. Genau, das ist richtig. Ja? Yeah? That makes sense. Okay, so if we now go back to um zu, there are other tricky bits with this structure and one is if we want to say in order not to do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then we need to position the nicht somewhere in the sentence and I have an example for you. Tanja fährt mit Stützrädern, um nicht zu stürzen. I am not sure what Stützrädern are, but I kind of it's, understand what's going on. It's these little wheels that children have on the sides of their bicycles. Ah, I think we call them stabilizers in the UK. Yes. So the, the sort of training wheels on, on a bike. Yes, that's correct. Yes. So Tanja fährt mit Stützrädern. Genau. So she rides her bike with the training wheels, with the stabilizers, um nicht zu stürzen, um, so that she doesn't fall. Genau, and we have the nicht just before the infinitive structure. Yeah, um right, nicht okay. zu stürzen. We could squeeze in something between the um and the nicht. Yeah, for example, um heute nicht zu stürzen. Right, so as not to fall today. Yeah, genau. However, if we want to qualify the stürzen, then we could squeeze in something after the nicht, um nicht so schlimm zu stürzen. Right. Okay, that, that all makes sense. Yeah. I have another example, if you would like to hear it. Yeah, natürlich. Um die Prüfung nicht zu verpassen, hat Tim einen Wecker gestellt. Right, so there we have um die Prüfung nicht zu verpassen. In order uh, not to miss the exam, uh, had Tim einen Wecker gestellt. Um, Tim has set an alarm? Genau, das ist richtig. Right, so the nicht then is again coming uh, just in, in that specific position there before the zu. Ja, genau. But then again, we can qualify the, the verpassen, mm -hmm. yeah, and we could squeeze something in after the nicht, um die Prüfung nicht nochmals zu verpassen, not right. again. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so that's um zu with nicht. Is there anything more that we need to know about that? No, not that, but there is more about um zu in general. Okay. And we can look at um zu with modal verbs. Our modal verbs are wollen, dürfen, müssen, können, sollen. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I'll give you an example and then we can look at this. Katja räumt ihr Zimmer auf, um danach an die Feier ihrer Freundin gehen zu dürfen. Right, okay, yeah, okay. So I think I'm following this. Katja tidies her room. Uh, Katja räumt ihr Zimmer auf, um danach an die Feier ihrer Freunden, so in order afterwards to the party of her friend, gehen, to go, zu dürfen, to be allowed, uh, in order that she's allowed to go to the, her friend's party. Genau, so the zu goes with the modal verb at the end. Okay. Ja? And I have another example for you. Um nicht den Hügel hochlaufen zu müssen, nimmt Peter den Bus. Right, so the Hügel is the hill and hochlaufen must be walk up. Ja, das stimmt, ja, right. richtig. So, um nicht den Hügel hochlaufen zu müssen, um, in order... Uh, we've got a nicht in here. Um, not to have to walk up the hill. Genau. Nimmt Peter den Bus. Uh, Peter takes the bus. Genau. So obviously we could turn this around. Peter nimmt den Bus, um nicht den Hügel hochlaufen zu müssen. We can always start with the main clause or the subordinate clause, depending on where we want our emphasis to be. Okay, so that is um zu when we've got a modal verb. Right. What's next? Next is separable verbs. Okay, can I guess what happens here? Absolutely. 
Would the two go between the two parts of the verb by any chance? That is correct. Well done. Very good guess. And I'll give you an example. Okay. Rolf trägt einen lustigen Hut, um aufzufallen. Right. I'm not sure about auffallen, to be honest. It's uh, to draw attention to yourself. Oh, right. Okay. So, Rolf trägt einen lustigen Hut, um aufzufallen. Um, he is wearing a funny hat. Uh-huh. Um, in order to draw attention to himself. Ja, genau. Richtig. Okay. Ja, sehr gut. And another example would be, Kerstin trinkt noch einen Kaffee, um nicht einzuschlafen. Right, so Kerstin uh, is drinking another coffee, uh, um nicht einzuschlafen, in order not to fall asleep. Ja, das ist richtig. Sehr gut, super. Okay. Yeah. Right. Anything else? Yeah, so there is one last bit, and it is about reflexive verbs. Okay. So, zum Beispiel, sich, sich kämmen oder sich ärgern, so to uh, comb your comb hair, your hair or, or to, to worry. Uh, get annoyed. Okay. Yeah, sich ärgern, to mm-hmm. get annoyed. Mm-hmm. And let's look at what happens there. Theo kauft sich eine Schachtel Pralinen, um sich zu verwöhnen. Right, so, um, sich verwöhnen. Is to treat yourself. Right, so Theo kauft sich eine Schachtel Pralinen. He buys himself a, a box of Pralin chocolates. Yes. Um sich zu verwöhnen. And in order to treat himself. So the sich is coming straight after the um. Genau, das ist richtig. Sich straight after the um. So if we wanted to add something, then we would say um sich heute zu verwöhnen. Mm-hmm. Okay. Ja, right. so the heute would come after the sich. Right, so Theo kauft sich eine Schachtel Pralinen, um sich zu verwöhnen. Sehr gut. Mm-hmm. Ja, sehr gut. Und dann noch ein Beispiel mit nicht, ein Exempel mit nicht. Stefanie schneidet die Tomaten vorsichtig, um sich nicht zu verletzen. Ah, so we've got a nicht in there. Now, I guess the, the nicht is just an adverb, so it, it works the same way as heute, coming in there. Das stimmt. After the, ja. the reflexive pronoun. So, Stefanie schneidet die Tomaten vorsicht, vorsichtig, um sich nicht zu verletzen. Um, Stephanie cuts the tomatoes carefully in order not to to cut herself, to harm herself, injure herself. to injure herself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, right. So we've talked about umzu in general. We've talked about umzu with nicht. Uh, we've looked at modal verbs. We've looked at separable verbs. And now we've also looked at reflexive verbs. And we've also thrown some negatives in there all the way along. After the break, we're going to be listening to a conversation in which you're going to be hearing examples of all of these umzu clauses. But that is in just a moment. In addition to the podcast version of Coffee Break German Season 3, we're also putting together a full course on the Coffee Break Academy, where you'll be able to access bonus materials to help you make even better progress with your German. That's right. Not only will you be able to enjoy an ad-free audio version of each lesson, we'll also provide a bonus episode where Andrea will be testing us with some translation challenges based on the topic of each lesson. And of course, there are comprehensive notes and a video version of each lesson too. Visit coffeebreakgerman.com and follow the links for Season 3 there. Okay, welcome back. We are talking about Umzu today and we are going to be listening to a conversation now. Andrea, what's the, the context of this conversation? So it's about two friends, Sandra, who is Swiss, and Mike, who is her Scottish friend. And Mike wants to travel to Switzerland and asks Sandra for some advice. Okay, I'm sure you may well recognize uh, Mike and Sandra's voices. <laughs> Let's have a listen. 
Hallo Sandra, wie geht es dir? Hallo Mike, gut, danke. Und dir? Was machst du so? Mir geht es super. Ich fliege nächste Woche in den Urlaub in die Schweiz. Sag mal, du bist doch Schweizerin. Weißt du, was ich tun soll, um einfach durchs Land zu reisen? Ich will von Zürich nach St. Moritz und dann nach Zermatt und dann vielleicht noch ein bisschen an den Genfersee. Na klar, um die Naturschönheiten zu genießen, fährst du am besten mit dem Zug. Ach so, ich habe extra einen internationalen Führerschein machen lassen, um mir ein Auto mieten zu können. Nein, das ist nicht nötig. Die meisten Orte sind gut erschlossen und ich empfehle dir, mit öffentlichen Verkehrsmitteln zu fahren, um den Stau zu vermeiden. Okay, und wo kaufe ich die Fahrkarten? Also am besten gehst du online, um dir deine Fahrkarten zu kaufen. Dort kannst du schon mal im Voraus buchen, um Geld und Stress zu sparen. Das ist eine gute Idee. Was soll ich denn an Kleidung einpacken? St. Moritz soll ja sehr schick sein. Um schick essen zu gehen, solltest du schon etwas Elegantes einpacken. Aber ich nehme an, dass die Bergbeiz eher nach deinem Geschmack ist. Da brauchst du dann vor allem gute Schuhe, um den Berg raufzulaufen. Ja, ich wollte unbedingt wandern gehen, um auch wieder etwas fit zu werden. Das kannst du dann auch in Zermatt. Um dich auf der langen Fahrt nicht zu langweilen, solltest du mit dem Glacier Express reisen. Die Panoramafenster und der Service sind toll. Lohnt sich das? Um mich nicht völlig in Unkosten zu stürzen, wollte ich eher billig unterwegs sein. Nein, also das würde ich nicht tun. Dann nimmst du besser belegte Brote auf die Wanderung mit, um dich finanziell nicht zu verausgaben. Gut, äh, du hast recht. Und was hältst du von der Reise an den Genfersee? um noch ein bisschen Französisch sprechen zu können? Super Idee. Die Gegend ist sehr schön. Um sie richtig kennenzulernen, empfehle ich dir, die Weinberge zu besuchen. Oh, ich erinnere mich an einen Ausflug nach... <laughs> I'm thinking that we need to, to explain something to the, the listeners, Andrea. Um, this, the, this part that I was playing there, Mike... I was reading a script, so it's not like all this German was coming fluently out my mouth, so <laughs> I should apologize, perhaps. Don't be too hard on yourself, uh, Mark, and uh, no one would have noticed. Don't tell people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's uh, talk a little bit about what happened in our conversation. Yes, we have our two friends, Mike and Sandra, and Sandra is a Swiss person and Mike is from Scotland and they're discussing Mike's upcoming holidays to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sandra can give him some ideas about traveling uh, through the country. She suggests that he should take the train in order to enjoy the beautiful landscapes. This doesn't really match with what he had planned, does it? It doesn't, because Mike went to the border of getting an international driver's license so that he could rent a car. But uh, Sandra thinks it's better to avoid traffic jams. Okay, so what is her suggestion to him about the, the transport then? She suggests that he uh, gets train tickets online and uh, enjoys the, the train journeys that he can make through Switzerland. And his main concern then seems to be about what clothes he should be packing, depending on what he wants to do. Exactly. Sandra thinks he should pack good boots to go to the mountain restaurant, but elegant clothes if he wanted to go somewhere fancy, which okay. she doesn't think he really wants to do. Okay. Now they talk a little about the, the cost of travelling. Exactly. Mike wants to save some money on his journeys, but Sandra doesn't think this is a, a good idea. She suggests that he spends the money on travels and saves some money by bringing sandwiches on his hiking trips. Exactly. She really thinks he should book tickets for the Glacier Express. And it's not surprising that I think that too, And I really recommend it to anybody who wanted to travel to both St. Moritz and Zermatt to take the Glossy Express and enjoy the wonderful views through the panorama windows and the great service. Sounds good. Now, they also mention uh, Lake Geneva. 
Exactly. Mike would like to speak some French and thought a trip to Lake Geneva would be a, a good idea. And Sandra agrees. She thinks the area is wonderful and proposes a trip to the vineyards to get to know the area really well. And just as we come to the end of the conversation, it fades out. We don't find out all the details about where she was proposing, but um, uh, there we have it. Well, that's certainly given me a, a few ideas as to where I could be going in, in Switzerland on my next trip. Uh, so thanks for that. I definitely will look into the, gla- the Glacier Express. That sounds fabulous. Okay, I think that is almost it for this episode. There is still noch eine Kleinigkeit that we have to look at. Today we're looking at a very uh, German saying, or maybe a very Swiss saying, and it's gut geplant ist halb gewonnen. Right. And what could that be? So gut geplant, something well planned, is half uh, one. Yes, and basically what it means that if you plan well, very few things can go wrong. You've already won half Half the battle. Ah, excellent. Gut geplant ist halb gewonnen. Genau. It's a, it's a mindset, Mark. Absolutely. <laughs> well, hopefully you can plan your German practice over the coming weeks and months. And of course, if you'd like to do that with the Coffee Break German Season 3 course, then you can find that over on the Coffee Break Academy at coffeebreakacademy.com. In each of our lessons, we go through in detail the, the conversation that we've had. So go through all of these umzus and we'll talk about every single one of them. And we also provide uh, the transcript, a video version and the translation challenge. All of that is at coffeebreakacademy.com for now. That's it for this episode. Das reicht für heute. Vielen Dank und bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis bald. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2022, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>